Definitely, some feedback would be cool. Yeah, for sure. So let's get into this episode. This one's going to be a little different than our first four. Yeah, definitely. So this one we're going to be talking about paranormal, um, something that we are both super, super into. Big time. We always have, actually, since we were really young. Yeah, always. I remember when I was like in elementary school and middle school and there'd be scary movies on the TV. And if I was up at late at night, I would watch them by myself, no problem, which is terrifying. I don't know if I believe that. Okay, so now I can't for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to call that into question. Okay, so let me rephrase. Not like paranormal movies. I would watch like Halloween because they were my favorite when okay, I was Okay, see? A little those, different. Yeah, and that's the thing about us. We were very different or we're very um, biased on our scary or horror movies. Oh my God, super. So like Halloween slasher films, things like that, I used to be super into, and now not so much. Now I'm mainly into strictly paranormal horror movies. So demons, ghosts, spirits, hauntings. Exactly. All of that stuff. <clears throat> so one, we're huge fans of it, and two, we are very strong believers. Oh, big time. It's out, there is life beyond death, other dimensions, something's interwoven, I mean, Something definitely interacts with us. I've actually seen a few things that we're definitely going to talk about. And you've experienced some things. Um, or not so much. I don't think I've ever experienced anything, actually. Okay. I am. So here's the thing about me. I am super interested. I strongly believe mm -hmm. in the paranormal. However, I don't believe in calling the paranormal. So... Whereas you, for example... What do you mean, calling them? <laughs> like, inviting them to talk to you, inviting them in. I don't believe in that, only because, which we're going to talk about, you never know what you're going to get. You True. don't know what kind of spirit you're talking to. Yes. And so, for that reason, I don't mess with Ouija boards. <laughs> we, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, we have two Ouija board planchettes, or planchettes? What do you call them? Planchettes. Planchettes. Yeah. The little uh, indicator, the thing you put your hands on and move around the board. Yeah, that everyone thinks that someone else is moving it whenever it moves on the board. Exactly. Which, I mean, I, had, I have to admit, probably 99% of the time, 99.999, it is someone else being a dick and moving in and trying Absolutely. to scare people. But, but you that never know. 0.1%. Yeah, this is definitely some of the stories we're going to tell you. Um, if you're a believer, then that'll freak you out. If you're not, then you're still going to be skeptical and not believe them. Yeah. But that's okay. You know, everyone's to each their own. If you haven't experienced it or you don't believe in it, you know, it, it seems very far-fetched. But honestly, if you don't believe in it and you like scary movies, you'll probably still enjoy this episode because oh, definitely there's certain. some creepy, creepy stuff. Creepy, eerie stuff. Yeah, that we're about to talk about. So, let's get started. Let's so, see. We do, okay, so we'll talk about... The smaller of the indicators on the table of the Ouija board. Uh, I got that one probably in high school, and I bought it just from like a, I don't know, an odds and end toy store, and it was a glow in the dark, like made by a board game company, you yeah. know, glow in the dark Ouija board. And so we used that one a few times at home, and then one time it, uh, just to explain, our entire family is on my mom's side is a uh, Hispanic, super superstitious. Very superstitious. Doesn't want to mess around with that, any of that stuff. Very religious. Very religious, yeah. You know, that's bad, bad news for them. Absolutely. Which, um, on my whole mom's side of the family, there's a few of her sisters, nieces, brothers um, that actually have, like, okay, 
again, if you don't believe in this stuff, fine. But they have like a sixth sense. Yes. They absolutely are so intuitive to spirits or other beings being around, or they feel it when something bad is going to happen. Yeah, they run on a different frequency, and that's what a lot of people like to say. Like people connect yeah. through frequencies, and um, they definitely a few of them. You're right. Um, they get simple things like not even simple because it's weird. Um, a feeling like they'll wake up in the middle of the night and have a feeling about someone in our family. We have a huge family. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many is there? Like oh my gosh, 40? we definitely counted. It's over 40 now. Yeah. But. So they'll know exactly something's wrong, call that person, and something bad has happened. Yeah. That happens multiple times. Or a simple way to for me to explain it to people is, have you ever like been hanging out and you look at your phone and you're about to grab it and you know someone's going to text you? Yep. And then they text and you they text or they call you. you. Okay, that is, in my opinion, and what I believe is, when that person's calling you, they have the intention – and their whole body is thinking about calling you. So they're right. sending their vibration out. And then as they're doing that, you know, they're actually using the telephone to do it. Well, you're getting that feeling, their frequency reaching for you mm-hmm. before the phone does. Yeah. So it's like as soon as they think about you and they're thinking about calling you, it's already going to you. And you're like, oh, shit, uh, James is going to call. Boom, the phone rings. It's fucking James. Exactly. Those things happen, and a lot of people have experienced it, and that is something that cannot be explained. And a lot of people look to it as coincidence, a little coincidence That's a hell of a coincidence, because when, when it happens to you, you, you're like, I knew they were going to call. How did I fucking, I wasn't even thinking about them. Yeah, especially if it's like a random person that yeah. you like haven't talked to in a while or something like that. You're like, oh, I was just thinking about you. Mm-hmm. And that person just so happened to be thinking about you too kind of thing. Yeah. So, so uh, some- you know what? A few of those aunts that we have that uh it was two of them that have those whatever if you want to call it six cents uh they were playing with that glow in the dark ouija board at my house Mm -hmm. it worked like it started moving around and spelling things out they all got freaked out and said you know get rid of that board and my mom told me she burned (laughs) it and got rid of it i was like what the fuck that was my ouija board like well it turns out she just gave it to the girls our cousins we have a uh a group of cousins on one side of the family. There and are there's, five there's sisters. five sisters, so we just call them the girls. Yeah. But yeah, they told me they ended up, that mom gave it to them. But. What the heck? So that's what happened to my first Ouija board, and I was pretty mad about it. <laughs> and I was really into this stuff. And so I decided to get another one. Mm-hmm. And this is where things got really, really interesting. So I talked to my aunt that was really into this stuff and went to psychics and, you know, really believed in the cold and had a lot of paranormal experiences herself, especially with her husband, our uncle. Yeah, definitely. And she's like been with us to the haunted places around in San Antonio. Oh yeah. She's very into it. It, Definitely. 100%. She's the one who always got me interested in it. Mm -hmm. And then, so what I did was I asked her that I wanted a Ouija board and I said, I want a really good Ouija board. She's like, all right, I got you. So months went by. What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> but she knew. Oh, she knew. Not one from like Target. You wanted a legit. Exactly. I wanted. Exactly. I didn't yeah. want it to say, you know, Mattel or whatever the toy company yeah. is at the bottom of it. <laughs> so <clears throat> months went by and uh, she actually got it for me for one of my birthdays. I want to say I was like 19 or 20. Well, she came down. They don't live here. They live in the valley. So it's about four hours away. They came up to San Antonio hung out for whatever the weekend was and she told me i got you a present but do not show your mom (laughs) okay so she takes me to the room and she's like i got you a ouija board and she goes now look however the ouija board is keep it that way and i was like okay what the fuck does that mean yeah well this is what happened she went to her psychic friend that she goes to whatever weekly monthly whatever it is Mm -hmm. and she told her that she had a, uh, a new psychic friend that was starting off in San Antonio that needed a good Ouija board. Mm-hmm. Could she get one for her? So she told her this false pretense that, you know, a psychic needs this Ouija yeah, board. Yeah, not a teenage Not kid. a teenager. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing with it. So she said, yeah, sure, no problem. Well, if you know the, uh, the geography of Texas, the valley is right at the very bottom, the most southern point, mm-hmm. and it's right next to to Mexico. Yeah, right on the border. So a lot of our family goes to Mexico a lot of the time. Well, they did back in the day when it was a lot safer, at yeah. least. Not like now. But Some of them used to live there, too, and then they eventually yeah, moved back to Brown When we were younger, it wasn't that bad. Right. So it was different. They could walk across, go there, day trips, yeah, you know, whatever, shopping. Yeah, we would. So that psychic friend went to Mexico, where she lived, and talked to a friend of hers that practiced witchcraft. 
scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly, for sure. You don't want to mess around with that, especially if you believe in spirits and stuff like that. Exactly. That's not something you typically want to mess around with. That is inviting something darker, something not so uh, friendly. You know, friendly. <laughs> Casper over here is enjoining them. <laughs> exactly. So that witchcraft friend went and got a Ouija board, a Mexican Ouija board, you know, all the letters, the alphabets in Spanish, you know, double N-A and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. C, no, you know, <laughs> said a yes or no. Did Adios like, for goodbye. Did it have like cha, like C, cha? Yes, it had all the Spanish letters. Oh my God, it had yes. the whole alphabet? Yes. That's hilarious. So uh, she bought one of those and then she took it to a graveyard and she dug into the dirt to a specific, by someone's specific grave, someone that used to practice, uh, like, dark things, Santeria, black magic, whatever. Yeah. Witchcraft. So then they kept it in underground for a certain amount of days, whatever the ritual was, I guess. And then every day they, like, poured blood on it, whether it had been, like, animal, like, chicken or stray dog, cats, and they would do, like, a ritual to it. What the? So when I got this Ouija board, <laughs> that's what she told me. She's like, when my psychic friend gave this back to me, she's like, does your psychic friend know what they're doing? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, yeah. Of course, sure. she goes, be careful, because this is now an active board. Okay. It's been kind of juiced up, you know? Yeah. Pit my ride Ouija board style. <laughs> it's got the bells and whistles. So when I get this thing, <laughs> it's wrapped in a towel. I un open it, and the front of it, you know, written in Spanish, Ouija board, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, there's holes uh, poked through the cardboard top in four corners. Like and to breathe? <sighs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Something needs to breathe in there. Like, don't suffocate it. You'll get very mad. Oh, my God. So where those holes were poked in the board, uh, or in the in the box, there were Sharpie crosses drawn on it. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So then I open it, and on the board there's, I don't know, I want to say like 30 pieces of white pieces of cardboard paper cut up, and a whole bunch of them, like sprinkled in the box. And mm -hmm. they were like an inch by an inch size. Okay. And then there was a whole bunch of sand. And it was all atop. And she's like, okay, so now you see what this is. Okay, red flag number one of this episode. <laughs> Why is there sand in it? It was to, like, protect it. Yeah. When it's not being used. Right. Like, as a barrier. Yeah. And that they way... do that a lot in, like, voodoo and black magic. And there's certain barriers and stuff to use to contain. Yeah, if you guys haven't been to, like, a voodoo shop or anything, we've been to some in New Orleans. In New Orleans, they're really cool. They're super awesome places, but he's right. They're very ritualistic when yes. it comes to certain pieces. There's certain of... things that are from the earth that can channel or do certain, you know. Yeah, exactly. It can, like, leave a door open, leave a portal open, stuff like that. Yes. And so they are... So that's what I assumed with the sand was in there. <laughs> and she told our aunt, um, whoever's going to use this, your psychic friend, every time they're done with it, make sure to put the board in the box, mm -hmm. sprinkle all the sand back on top of it, and then put all those pieces of, uh, cut up pieces of paper, the squares, back on it and, and you know, shut the box. So how'd you do with that upkeep? I mean, I don't know where the box is, or the sand, <laughs> or the white pieces of paper. Maybe. Okay, so she gives me this Ouija board for my birthday, and I was like, oh my god, this is fucking awesome. This yeah. is so cool. And, you know, late late that night, everyone's asleep, and she's still up, and my girlfriend at the time, and I was like, hey, let's, uh, you want to play it? You know, let's see if anything happens. Mm -hmm. So my very first experience with the Ouija board, the planchette that's right here, if you're watching at home. Um, we pull it out and it's just us three. We, we're sitting in my room and we start using it and we don't use it maybe 10, 15 minutes and nothing happens. It's just, you know, we're, the way you start a board, a session is you put your hands all on the planchette and you move it like in a big circular pattern, not in any, you know, uh, specific way or rigid, just kind of loose moving it. And then while you're trying to communicate with something, then you hope that something takes over. Right. So we're just moving around. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And then... Just out of nowhere, I get fucking really sick. I get extremely, like, lightheaded mm -hmm. and, like, uh, very nauseous. Like, I had to immediately stand up and run to the restroom and throw up. Oh I got really God. sick. So nothing, yeah, it didn't move or anything, but I was like, that's fucking weird. And immediately I was like, okay, we're done. Like, yeah. that's interesting. That I was is like, interesting. Okay. So, like, something about us, too, we're very, um, I would say sensitive to like energies yeah both of us so recently literally like a month or two ago it was pretty close to after the surgery we went to a flea market mm -hmm. um in san antonio 
And we found this one little vendor who did like crystals, energy, stuff like that. And they had a kind of like a ohm like sound playing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like over their super loud speaker. And I walked in there and my brother is looking around and stuff. And I literally felt like I needed to get the fuck out of there. And we literally walk out and I felt like I was going to throw up like right then and there something to do with the frequency. That frequency did not agree with you. It was so odd because to me it literally just sounded like boom. Yeah, to me it didn't. I, I was like, like, all right, felt cool. it in my core, which is so weird. And again, if you guys don't believe this stuff, fine, but pretty interesting. Oh, you look sick. I was like, what's wrong with you? You're like, I need to get the fuck out of here. I was like, why? (laughs) And you were like pointing at the speaker. I was like, that's really weird. Yeah. That's very odd. People run and pick up different things. Some people are very like, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say all the way, which I believe these do exist, but empaths. Oh, yeah. Where so you feel what they other people feel other are what people are feeling, or like they they're very emotional people because they they feel it more than other people right. feel the pain, the happiness, the sadness, the guilt, the anger, the jealousy, whatever. Exactly. They feel more. Yeah. So we feel like people definitely do have these gifts. These, oh, for sure. Yeah. I believe that. Yes. Yeah, I do too. Um, so it's just really interesting to us whenever we meet people or we talk about these things because we can have conversations about it for. Oh, for sure. So, pretty cool stuff. So, continue with this. Okay, so... Haunted as fuck So, Ouija now board. My, my good Ouija board. Uh, the first time, you know, it doesn't take over. <laughs> a spirit doesn't talk to us. Take but it over made the you throw up. But it made me really sick. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did not feel good. And it was so, like out of nowhere, too. Oh, right? yeah. We were fine. Yeah. We were just, hey, what's up, blah, blah. Everyone else would just like, okay, let's go use the Ouija board. Mm-hmm. And then got super sick. So, it sat in my closet for months. And at this point, I started working at a restaurant. It was one of those bad... It was Benihana. Yeah, you know, so Benihana's Japanese are everywhere. Japanese teppanyaki restaurant where they do all the tricks in front of you and, you know, good food, sushi. Yeah. It's badass. Chateaubriand. Chateaubriand. Yeah. Better than filet mignon, for sure. Oh, hell yeah. So I was hanging out with uh, the people over there. You know, uh, Kobe, one of my really good friends, was working over there. Uh, I was good friends with one of the other servers and uh, good friends with the manager. And the, the server and the manager lived together, those two girls... And then they were kind of friends with the hostess. And the hostess, for those of you who don't really or haven't ever worked in a restaurant, um, servers and everything like that are usually like 18, 21, older, you know, yeah. older, can drink. Uh, maybe sometimes not drink yet. But the hostesses are typically like in high school. They're like yeah. sophomore, junior, senior sometimes. That's what I did in high school. So that's exactly what the hostess was. Um, her name was Lee. And... She was a either a junior. She was like seventeen, eighteen, okay. whatever. Still in high school, but they were already always uh, real friendly with her, and they kind of like included it in stuff because I knew there was something up with Lee, but I didn't really know her backstory. Mm-hmm. Well, I fucking found out, and it's not good, <laughs> not good at all. Found out real quick. Yeah. So one night I tell them about my honey honey Ouija board, and they were like, "Let's fucking do it. Let's do it at my apartment." I was like, "All right, yeah, fuck it. I haven't pulled that thing out since I got sick." Yeah. So we go over there. And uh, we prepare the room, you know, turn off all the lights, light some candles. And here's the thing. So I'm going to tell them exactly. I'm going to tell you, the listeners, exactly what I told them. So Uh, a Ouija board has very specific rules. Exactly. That you are supposed to follow to kind of prevent, kind of protect you from bad, evil spirits. A hundred percent. So a lot of people don't like and think Ouija boards are bad, innately bad. Because you are opening yourself up to talking to something. You well, don't know yeah. who. And no matter what you think, and if you think you're talking with a past loved one, you know, or a friend or anything, it, just because they say it's that person does not fucking mean that. It could be a, a bad spirit that wants to mess with you and it wants you to invite them in. Exactly. Which means it can affect you more. Then you'll start noticing noises in your house, haunt. Like, it will affect yeah. you. So. I told them all, here's the thing about using a Ouija board. If we're going to do it, that's awesome. But you have to believe in it. And you don't have to believe in it in the way that, yes, ghosts exist. You just at at least have to be open to the possibility that you don't know for certain anything. So when were you using it, you have to be in that state of mind. If you're sitting there, you know, eyes closed and your hands on it and it's going, and you're just like, nah, this is stupid. Well, then you know what? More than likely, it's not going to work. Right. Why would a spirit come into it? You need to be in the right state of mind. You almost, and here's the thing why people don't like it, is surrender. 
And that's that surrendering that yeah. something can come and take advantage. See, and that's why I personally don't would ne- like honestly I never have and I never will. Like you, Here, so we'll do it right now. Board, no, fuck <laughs> that. Literally never will. It's strictly for that reason. Like he said, you never know who or what you are talking to. Mm-hmm. They lie. They can tell you things that either you don't want to hear or things that you do want to hear and really just fuck with your mind. So, okay. So that night, a few of them had never used one before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this is what I told them. Okay. Here are some of the rules, the questions and how to properly use a Ouija board. First, be in the state of mind that I just told you. Now here are some of the guidelines and rules because people want to ask whatever they want. And asking certain questions is a big no, no because of what it invokes and invites. Right. So you never want to ask, when am I going to die? Why would you ask something that you don't want to know or you're not ready to know? Right. You you shouldn't, things like that. Uh, Am I ever going to get sick? Ask about dead loved ones that have passed on. Uh, What's going to happen in the future? You can't like base, what happens if it told you something and you lived your life like that because that's what it told you? Mm -hmm. It could just be messied with you. Never ask, this is a big one, never directly ask to talk to a demon. Yeah, I wrote, well, that's on my well. list to tell people. Uh, is it possible to possess me? So that's directly inviting a spirit to come inside your body and take over. Mm-hmm. Or your mind, which is equally as frightening. Exactly. Uh, you can't always believe everything that's said is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't use it alone because you're more vulnerable. Don't leave the planchette on the, on the board when you're done with it. And you always have to close the session. So if, if you're using the Ouija board and let's say things start happening and you truly believe you're talking to a spirit, always be respectful and just ask for generalized questions. You know, um, you can ask about here? the spirit. Yeah. Ask them about them because you're just there and you're open to talk. Right. But you don't know who wants to talk back. Exactly. So it's just like generally not a good idea when you are using a Ouija board to ask questions about yourself or about your family. So you're like that's just inviting things that Yeah, you you're don't just know. there to communicate with whatever is, is okay there. with it. Right. And then if it goes bad or for some reason like oh, what's about to happen in the story, um, you have to close the board properly and you have to physically move the planchette over to the word that says goodbye and say goodbye, we are done and pick it up off the board. Mm-hmm. That is the way to close it properly. Yeah, make sure you don't like slide it some more because then <laughs> you don't know if it's closed That's or not. That's the proper way. And there are also some indicators that <clears throat> maybe something not so nice is uh, among you. Mm-hmm. If it starts going into the four corners of the board, oh, yeah. that's a really bad sign. They say you should not. Uh, <laughs> there's a few words, and I'm not gonna say those particular spirits' names, mm-hmm. like in the episode of Ghost Adventures that we've seen that it spells it out. Yeah. And you're so not supposed to say it out loud. You're not supposed to say right. demon names. I mean, yeah. you're not. You're calling upon them. Mm-hmm. Using their name is summoning them. Yeah, that's like if you guys have seen The Conjuring, they say multiple times in order to get rid of a demon or something, then they use their names. Yeah. But in other times, no, that's not a recommended thing. No, no, yeah. That's, that's to get power over them when they are unknown and possessing or... Um, What's the, not possession? Infestation. Infestation. That's the first, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so back to the story. So <laughs> those are little rules about the Ouija board if you don't know. All right, so we start playing. Myself, Kobe, uh, the two girls in the apartment, the manager, the server, and then the young girl, uh, Lee. And, you know, it's working, and we're taking turns, and it's, like, kind of working. It's moving and spelling out some stuff, and we're like, huh. And I'm like, hmm. You know, I've done a lot of Ouija board sessions in high school, younger in college, so typically someone's being the dick and moving and it moving and it, trying yeah. to spell shit out and freak people out, whatever. But if you're really attentive and you put your hands lightly on the planchette, you can see and feel when someone's pushing it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty obvious when you're actually doing it. Light hands, light fingertips, barely touching is how you're supposed to do it, not putting pressure down and shoving it across right. the board. So I figure out that out of the combination of people that are using the Ouija board, that it's working exceptionally well when myself and Lee are using it. The young hostess. The young girl. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hey, Lee, why don't you and I just use it? And she's like, okay. And I was like, I'm going to figure out if she's moving this and trying to fuck with this or not. Yeah. And I don't really expect this of her because she's extremely young, super polite, very, you know, innocent. Like she was not, you know, there to fuck with people and little right. like jokester. She just wasn't like that. Well, we start using it and it's moving. I mean, it's answering stuff. And I'm like, okay, no way she's doing this. So I decided to put it to the real test. 
And I was like, what's my grandfather's middle name? And no one knew that in the room. Even my best friend at the time, Kobe, that was there, he didn't know that. Yeah. And it literally spelled out Edward. And I was like, okay, we're talking to somebody because nobody fucking knows that. Right. Like, she's not doing it. Now it's confirmed. Like, that's something unknown to the, to the room. Exactly. So we're using it, and we're going back and forth asking questions. And remember the specific set of rules that I talked about right before this that I told the group that I was with? Well, Lee starts to get emotional and starts bringing up mom and dad. Okay, so... Mom, dad, why? Is that you? Can I speak to dad? Dad, are you there? What? And it's like, yes, here. What? Like, it's, it's talking back. And right now, everyone's staring at us, and I'm like, I'm not fucking doing this. Like, it's, something's going on here. Holy and then shit. she gets... Her emotions turn real quick. Yeah. And she starts, like, bawling her eyes out, and she goes, how could you do that to mom? Why would you leave me? Did y'all hate me? And I was like, what? Well, um, her, it was a murder-suicide. Her dad killed the mom and then killed himself. Oh, my God. So she is asking to speak to those spirits. And who already have this not really so bad way past. of going. Yeah. Yes, very violent, a lot of emotion in it, a lot of anger and rage. And when people die like that, and it's... It's not and you're a good situation. To talk to these people. So yeah. she, yeah, you're already asking about a very. So I'm okay at this point. I'm fucking freaking out, and I'm like, Lee, stop, 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 stop asking this. She's bawling, and it's moving across the table. And is she like stopping, or does she just continue asking questions? She, in those seconds where she, she was not listening to me. Okay. She was asking and like bawling, mm -hmm. and then so I was like, at that point, I, I yelled. I was like, Lee, you need to stop, and I yelled. And then I picked my hand off the planchette, and it, she was still moving and like moving her arm back to, towards her. She picked her hand off, off the planchette, and then it kept sliding and went off the table. The planchette. The planchette went off the board, slid, kept kept sliding across the board when she picked her hand off, and boom, right off the table. And everyone fucking freaked out, screamed, turned on all the fucking lights yeah, in the apartment, no shit. and we're like, we need to put that fucking thing back away. And Lee was like crying hysterically. And I was like, I, we discussed this. She's like, I'm so sorry. When I started working, I had to. Like, she's like, I had to. I was like, don't think that was them. Yeah, don't think don't. that was your dad. Don't think that was your mom. Like, that's what we spoke about. That's what we talked about. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it worked real well. Oh, my God. And it was real creepy. <gasps> that's fucking insane. I mean, we talked about those specific things not to say and ask. And then with her past, she just brings it up. And I was like, oh. Well, I Shit. feel like that's the thing, though, from her perspective, if you, like, have the opportunity to talk to those people who, which I'm assuming they died when she was very young. I mean, if I, don't I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. But if they did, and then obviously she's brought up just hearing about their story. I think it happened when she was in high school. Oh, okay. So, like, probably a few years prior. Yeah. Then she probably wanted to take the opportunity to attempt to talk to those people and didn't fully understand that what she is talking to is lying to her or isn't them or can be pretending to be them. I, I agree a hundred percent. Uh, here's the thing. I cannot imagine going through something like that. Oh, I, and that. the unanswered questions and the feelings you must feel yeah. from something like that. So any chance, even a chance to be able to communicate and get some closure and answers, like a course, like you're going to take it. Yeah. Did you know about her past before? You guys did the Ouija board? Um, yeah. I think they had told me when she had started. Oh. And that's why the older girls, like the manager and the server, they like, you know, brought her into their girl group. Right. And like, you know, not babied her, but like accepted her and yeah, hung out. Yeah, just kind of took her under And, you know, wing. we were older, so we were drinking and stuff like that when we went to like people's apartments, but she was never drinking. She was just there to hang out and chill. Yeah. She didn't have anyone. I mean, she didn't have any siblings and her parents are gone, so. I cannot imagine, but that's fucking creepy super creepy that's when i knew that board was something like yeah. it, it's whatever they fucking did in the dirt you know into maybe some murder or you know <laughs> warlock over there's grave and then kill chickens and cats and stuff like it like literally did it's sacrifices an active it's an this yeah board. it's a ritual they yeah. did something to it that's absolutely it's an active insane. board oh my god so you definitely closed out the board right yes immediately yeah, I picked oh it back God. up and went on to it. And I said, goodbye, we are done with you. Picked it up and then 
put it back it in the up and wrapped with it, the yeah. sand and everything. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I lost all that when I moved. <laughs> oh my God. It was like in the trunk of my car and I guess it got all torn up and stuff yeah. for moving and it's free now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my Atlanta. So obviously we have some, that was like story number one, basically. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's for paranormal stuff. What an opener. <laughs> that's the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, that sounds fucking creepy. And I have some other really creepy stuff, but that one, to see it really just, because I pulled my hand up and she's still pulling back, but then she picks her hand up off of it yeah. as she's retracting it. And it just keeps sliding and then off the table. Did it like slowly slide or did it like fly off the fucking table? Like how you see in scary movies. No, I feel like when she was moving her hand back, the same speed, it just... Psh. And it's not like it flew all the way across the table. I want to say like maybe a foot and right off the edge. Like, psh. Oh my It was God. a small coffee table. Yeah. Oh my Lanta. Well, that's fucking terrifying. Yeah, so I have a haunted Ouija board. <laughs> yeah, but so if you guys ever do decide to use a Ouija board, be, be sure to follow the rules. Yeah, be careful. Be Don't careful. ask about those kind of things. Take everything at granted because, you know, with a pinch of salt, grain of salt, whatever Grain of salt, say. yeah. I mean, it's, you don't know what you're talking to. You exactly. don't know their, I mean, you're just casting out bait into like Hoping the paranormal lake bites. and then you don't know what's going to be on the other end yeah. of that. You don't know and you won't know until it's there. Exactly. And it's with you. And like, in the room with you. Yeah. And we also don't really know like the spirit world all that well. So you don't know how they do know some of the answers that you're asking them. But obviously they can pretend to be whoever the fuck they want to be. I mean, you know? if you think about it, it and this is the way I think about it. Uh, when they talk about demons mm -hmm. that serve like Lucifer or Satan in the Bible, they say like specifically that they fill your ears and your mind with lies yeah. to pull you away from the light. Exactly. So whatever they can do to trip you up, to gain your trust, a little bit of like intrigue, interest, or something that's just so shocking and bearing to you that you can't help but not look away and yeah. gravitate towards it. And then they got you. Well, especially like using the Ouija board, if you're asking questions about your future and stuff, then obviously they're going to tell you some things that you probably want to hear. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, oh man, I have a connection with them, exactly. you know, and you want to talk to them more. And then more you're going to want to talk to them more yes. and more. Oh my gosh. You're inviting them into you. And if you invite it into your body, like into- Oh, you're fucked. Oh yeah. That's not, don't do that. I don't mean, do that guys. So it's really weird because we had a conversation the other day about- how did we believe that Ouija boards work? Mm -hmm. So like if we do a Ouija board in our house, is it mainly contacting spirits that would have died or haunt the area close to us? Or is it like an, is it like the internet? I'm open. I can catch some dude that died in Russia. So that was my thing. I feel like it's probably going to be more active if something did happen in your house or in whatever area you're doing it at. So the spirits that reside in those places are probably more likely to answer you but if you're in a place that isn't haunted or that isn't being taken over by spirits then i think it is like the internet you are literally cat like you're literally casting your bait into a, an ocean yeah. of spirits so that's how i think ouija boards work obviously <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, there's... That's my opinion. Our, our whole... I mean, that's just one story. That is actually probably the most shocking to me, to my yeah, core. Yeah, that one's freaking wild. But we have a lot of good ones. That house that, uh, you know, the, the all our cousins, the girls that uh, mom gave the Ouija board to, they lived in a haunted house for like a year. Yeah. And they were in between houses. They had sold their previous house faster than expected, and then the next one wasn't ready. They were, like, building it or something. Oh, okay. So they had, like, to kill time because the house already sold, so they right. rented for a year. And you, you didn't even remember this until I told you the other day. I don't know how old you were when this happened. Uh, she said 2001 or two. Okay, so I was four or five. Okay, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so they lived in this house, and um, it was whatever the five girls mm -hmm. and then maybe one or two of their husbands at the time and they were just you know all living there and then just waiting for the house to be built yeah and some really really weird stuff started happening in this house so one of the first things that they noticed is that was very odd about the house is um the deadlock it had a second deadlock um bolt for the front door but it was like at eye level 
Okay. So it wasn't right above the doorknob. It was way the fuck up here. Yeah. And they're like, why the hell is that? You know, that's fucking weird. Well, the thing is, where they all live, Brownsville is a very small city. You can literally go across town in like 10, 11 minutes. Yeah, literally. Like be anywhere, anywhere in a snap. You exactly. Know? So they would all come home for their lunch breaks because they could pretty much get the full hour. Right. You know, they'd have like 50 minutes, chill at home, eat, you know, watch TV. Well, since there's so many of them, there's five girls living there and some boyfriends or husbands at the time. It was like, hey, at lunch I get to see, you know, half my family. Yeah. Fucking cool. So they'd come home all the time. And they would come in and leave the door unlocked, knowing that their other sister or whoever is going to be right behind them, you know, in a matter of minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, con- like a few times, one of them would get home and see the other one's cars in the in the driveway and try to go inside, and it's locked. They unlock it, and the top lock is locked. And they're like, what the fuck? And they have to call the sister and be like, hey, fucking come open the door. Mm-hmm. And they go open the door and be like, that's weird. I didn't lock that lock. Yeah. That lock kept locking them out over and over. And so this happened within the first month. So when they talked to the landlord for the first time, or like first time since moving in, right? they told him about it. And he was like, oh, that's my mom. I'm sorry. What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> okay. So it turns out, and he told them, he's like, that's my mom. She died in this house. And okay. they're like, okay. And the thing about my mom is she used to um, babysit like a lot of the her grandchildren, I guess, why they were at work, the mm-hmm. parents, and why they were young. And so some of the kids were crazy and would, like, run and just open the door and run out into the neighborhood. What the fuck? You know, they're little crazy <laughs> little kids. So she installed that, that uh, deadlock at eye level so they couldn't so reach they it. Reach the little it. kids couldn't reach it. Yeah. So it was the mom or the grandma that was locking it for safety just like a habit. And yeah. that's what was locking the lock on them. Okay. That's very innocent. Very innocent, you know? Yeah. And so... The first time I go over to the, their house, they tell me this. And then they tell me, and then more stuff starts happening. I was like, okay, <laughs> tell me. So this house, the layout, when you walked in, was straight into the living room. You continued to the left. There was, like, the breakfast area. And then you turned around the wall, around the corner, and it was the entire kitchen area. And it was the type of kitchen that had a window over your the sink. Okay. Looking out into the backyard. Yeah, like most kitchens, I feel like. Yeah, a lot. Exactly, for sure. So... They would come home all the time and be hanging out, and it'd be just, you know, like I said, during lunch hour, just maybe one or two or three of them at home, mm-hmm. and um, they would hear, like, a pounding, like a knock, but, like, a pretty aggressive hard knock on a window in the kitchen, and they would freak the fuck out. Yeah, I bet. So one time this happened, because they had told him before, and they're like, no, nah, no, nah, and they're, you know, giving each other crap, but they're like, no, we already know the lock's happening. Something's going on. What happened at night... And it turns out he's uh, – now they're married, but I don't think at the time they were married. Our uncle – well, he's like – Our cousin. He's our cousin, but I call him <laughs> uncle. He's pretty much like That's an uncle weird. to me. Okay. <laughs> so our cousin, uh, her husband is a, is a cop. Now he's detective. Now he's even higher up than that. Yeah. Maybe lieutenant you, or sergeant. I think he's sergeant or lieutenant. We're um, watching Dexter at the moment. So we, <laughs> love so Dexter. So we know all these cop terms, okay? <laughs> so, yeah. So he's upper now, but – at that time, he I think he was just officer. He was a cop, yeah. And he went outside and ran in the backyard with his gun and his flashlight. Yeah, you Checking his seat because so, the knock on the window was that hard. And this is really late at night. Yeah. And it freaked out all the girls out. I mean, someone's in the backyard knocking on their house window. So they run back there and they said someone else went around the other side with a flashlight. Mm-hmm. And they went around the back both sides of the house and no one's there. So next time they talk to the landlord, they tell him and he's like, I'm so sorry. That's my mom. <laughs> You're like, okay, mamas. Bitch, come get your mom. <laughs> Dude, what's going on? <laughs> Turns out they had a really nice backyard, mm-hmm. like landscaped. Well, the grandpa, the dad, used to work in the yard all the time. And he'd be out there when supper was ready, when dinner was ready. Yeah. The mom would go and bang on that window to get his attention to come in and to eat. To come in and eat. Like, oh. That's what she was doing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so they said they, they tell me all this the first time I get there. I'm like, oh, shit. This house is freaky. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, already on edge. It's real late at night. And they're like, let's watch a scary movie. I was like, all right, let's watch The Exorcism 3. Mm -hmm. So we all pile on the couch, put on the TV, and it's not even two, three minutes into the movie. And, you know, all the lights are off, just the TV, and the TV goes out. Pitch black. And we're like, oh, shit, what the fuck? What the fuck? (laughs) You know, someone gets up, runs across the room, and flips on the lights. And we're like, what the fuck just happened? And Jaime's like, I don't know, dude. Jaime is uh, our the uncle. Cop, yeah. The cop, The cop. And 
I look over and they're the TV remote sitting on his lap. I was like, fuck you, hi man, you freaked us all out, yeah. you know, after telling us all that creepy shit that's been happening here. He's like, no, I didn't fucking touch him. I was like, yeah, okay, uh-huh, whatever, screw you. So we turn back on the TV, start playing the movie again, and he's like, look, I didn't do anything. And he picks up the remotes and he puts them on my leg, on my lap. I was like, okay, you know, now I know. Yeah. Not even like 45 seconds later, the TV just shuts off. And everyone's like, oh, shit, turn on the lights, turn on the lights, turn on all the lights. I remember we turned off that Stop movie. movie. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune was on. We watched the Wheel of Fortune. But yeah, something turned off the TV. Mm -hmm. And it was really freaky because it was just the TV. And they're all plugged into a surge protector. It wasn't a DVD player. It was wasn't anything else that yeah. was plugged into it. it so was it wasn't just like a TV. surge. Exactly. Whatever. It wasn't like, oh, that whole thing or, you know, uh, a breaker pop. It tripped it, Like yeah. nothing. Oh, man. So it's funny because later on they had mentioned that. And it turns out, guess who it was? Mama Sita. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's. That she would turn off the TV when the kids would um, not listen to her and put it on different channels that they weren't supposed to be watching. Yeah. She would just walk up and flip off the TV. Oh, my God. So she didn't want you guys watching the scary movie. Exactly. She was helping y'all. Yeah. That's really what it was. She didn't want us watching an evil movie, like a bad movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. Isn't that so funny, though? How, like, some spirits can be so angry. Yeah. And, like, aggressive. Mm -hmm. And others are actually just, like, protecting and so I have a living theory. their life. Yeah. So I had a theory one time. And I, I didn't further, like, a really iron out the details but i had an idea that being a ghost is uh, a form of purgatory i think so too and so the reason why i had this theory is because in my opinion or how i know things typically when you hear about hauntings they're they're scary and they're bad right very seldomly do you have one like at our cousin's house that it things happened but it was they never got a bad or scary feeling or evil presence yeah. but they would feel something in the house with them or move down the hallway and they would know she's here but it was never a bad or scary feeling it was right. oh something's here so typically when you hear about ghost stories it's kind of like creepy and bad or some kind of negative connotation to it. Mm -hmm. So what if, when you die, whatever time you have to be in purgatory is when you're a ghost. And the reason why the ghost stories that typically here are creepy or scary or frightening is because people notice them because they're there longer. The good ghosts, because they have to be in purgatory such a short amount of time, they're not there long enough for people to notice. Like... Let's say you die. You're a good person. You're a ghost in this house for like an hour. And then boom, you move on. Yeah. But if you're an evil fucking person, you murdered people and you raped and you did horrible things in your life, you haunt the shit out of this house for a long time because you're stuck in that plane. And that's why people notice you because of all the rage you have with you and right. how your circumstance, your death, and you're stuck in this plane for quite a lot longer than most people because of what you did. Well, that's like whenever we watch Ghost Adventures and they go to super haunted places and it's being haunted by spirits for 50 years oh, or yeah. something crazy like exactly. that. Like the spirits just haven't moved on. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I believe that they are being, if that they are stuck there. I think that it's their choice to stay there. Rather than go to hell, go to move on, go yeah. to whatever. Rather than moving on, because they always say that ghosts, usually they, this is what they say, obviously, but like they have a mission or they're trying to accomplish Unfinished something. business. They have unfinished yeah. business. And so I think that the people who are evil or the evil ghosts, etc., that those are the spirits who don't have anything to move on to. They're like, no, fuck this. I'm going to keep terrorizing people because I enjoy it. That's yeah. what they did in their daily lives. And now... That's They're true. I mean, if that. you hurt people in your life and you're an evil person, that's not going to change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, so, hey, that's a good one, too. That's what I believe. Obviously, we have no fucking idea. <laughs> no. I mean, and ho one day, hopefully, someone will know because there are a lot of ghost hunters and there are a lot of really cool technology that's out there that can capture something that we cannot perceive. Yeah. We, um, we talked about, about the SLS camera before. In episode one. Yeah, we yeah. talked about the spirit box, the SLS camera that can physically detect an anomaly it's the structure what is it called the structured light sensor yes sls yeah. and it goes off infrared lasers and it maps it into a so into a program and it shows up as a stick figure mm -hmm. so you'd be pulling down the hallway there's nothing fucking there with the infrared camera nothing there with the heat thermal camera and you pull out that camera 
and there's something walking towards you and they and they yeah. feel it they're like something's here figure. yeah there's and some really cool stuff the sls camera is like a um an xbox connect it's, it's based off the connects if y'all saw paranormal activity 4 mm -hmm. in that movie it's the connects camera that they flip the regular camera to um infrared mode and yeah. they could see all the lasers all the and lasers. that's where you see the little boy yeah moving moving so it's based off that, but then instead of seeing it, it senses where the lasers are disrupted and it maps it into stick figures. Right. So that thing's fucking creepy because they see things on they see things like sitting on your shoulder and someone will be like, "Man, my shoulder hurts." And they and look at him the and there's like a little stick figure sitting on him like yeah, doing something to him or crawling up the walls. It's We've seen really, them do some really weird stuff. Yeah, or like things sitting in a rocking chair and then the rocking chair starts moving like yeah. Shit like that. It's just absolutely insane. So hopefully we'll get some answers eventually. I've gotten, a, I've, you know what? I've gotten a few recordings, EVPs. Okay. So let's So I that. lived in a house with an ex-girlfriend for just a, it was a year lease. Mm -hmm. And when we moved in, things were fine. And I don't know why we felt something weird. Oh, I remember why. It was the dogs. So I know my dogs, you know, even though we were moving into a new house, yeah, they're going to adjust and, you know, check it out and learn the house but one of my dogs particularly tequila would go and growl at things and she would go to like mid wall you know just randomly in the living room and stare halfway up and start growling i thought she wouldn't go in the kitchen she she really didn't like the kitchen yeah. actually you're very right about that any uh, all back towards the pantry into the garage right. that's where she really didn't like she, like, would refuse to go over yeah. there. Yeah, she would follow us everywhere, and she wouldn't go in there. You're right. So that's another thing. Um, side note, dogs and children are apparently very susceptible cats. to... And cats. Studies say that if animals um, can perceive the paranormal, cats are the ones to do it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they've shown what little evidence there is for people perceiving things that most of us can't. Uh, to be able to do so are people that their brain waves function in alpha mode. Okay. They put themselves into that mode. Right. Dogs are in beta mode because they always are subservient to something and pack mentality. Cats are always in alpha mode, predator oh, mode. Oh, so because they're more of that, likely. They, they say cats. And you know what? You uh, There's a lot. Didn't you tell me about the cat things when they know that people are going to die? Yeah. So that's a thing. Um, in retirement homes. Yes. Um, That's what we're talking senior about. living stuff like that they have cats around there and you actually see this in movies and in shows but it's actually a thing where some cats will go to the person's room who's going to die and the next day done and the next day or like a few days later whatever but yeah. they know something is going on or something's about to happen so exactly when tequila was growling at random things which she had never done at this time she was already probably let's say nine years old I mean, she's not out of the blue, you know, this is something unusual and, and different. Right. Or it was out of the blue, actually. So I got curious and I got some uh, equipment to do EVPs and EVPs is electronic uh, voice phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So what you do is with a sensitive microphone, you do a recording app, just like Audacity. Right. And you just hit record. You speak like we're speaking, but you ask questions and then you pause in between them. And then what you do is you go back and listen to the recordings and you turn it up, all the levels, sound levels, so you can hear very, very intently the white noise. The white noise. It'll be and then you hear things talk out of it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, that's what they say. Right. So I did some EVPs there and fucking things talked. Oh my God. So the first thing about doing EVPs is I didn't realize this. Things have to be extremely quiet in the house. I had to turn off the AC units, all the fans, all the TVs in the house. My roommates couldn't be home. If one roommate was on the other side of the house with her TV on low, I could hear what it was saying in the recordings with that microphone. Uh, yeah. I mean, it picks up a lot. Right. So we only did it at times where there's nothing going on. No one's in the house. It's just me and a buddy. Mm -hmm. And we did it a few times. And my buddy at the time, Mike, came over and he didn't really believe in it. No, he does believe in it. And he's super he's afraid, afraid of it. Of he's it. super, which later on when we, I have a UFO story. And he was there, and he freaked out. Yeah. We saw a UFO, 100%. We'll talk about another episode, yeah. I think. So but. one time he was over, and we were doing EVPs, and he, I, I convinced Mike to talk. And he's like, hey, you know, uh, do you like me here? Uh, is it cool if I'm here hanging out, blah, blah? And he was kind of you know, joking, but just being very respectful. He didn't want to piss anything yeah. off or provoke it. 
And when we listened to it back, <laughs> he said, are you okay with me being here, blah, 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 something like that. And it literally, in between the white noise, it said, get out of here. It literally said, get out of here. So he brought his computer over after this happened and plugged it into his guitar amp. That's oh, yeah. how you would listen to it. Yeah, it's just super loud and you can really hear. It has to be so loud. And literally, he played it for us. And he was like, what do you think this says? Because the thing with EVPs, sometimes they're very hard very to make mumbled, out. Very mumbled, yeah. Very mumbled. They're not very articulate, ghost. Right. <laughs> sometimes they are. Okay, but true. But most of the time, no. So whenever you hear something and somebody tells you what they think it said, then that's what you hear. It's like a visually matrixing something. Yes. You see something, you know, just because it puts it together. But exactly. But if you hear ma, 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 and someone says brown now cow you're like yeah that's what it says exactly so typically i like to lead y'all with i'm gonna let y'all listen to it a few times and then i'm gonna tell you what i think it says so he showed it to my mom and i which she already was not happy about this <laughs> because she does not like this shit in our house uh and i was I wasn't like, living at the house at the time no i know but you brought it into the house True. <laughs> that was yeah. her issue it's not in my laptop living there you don't know so <laughs> He plays it for us, and literally both of us, like, get wide-eyed, look at him, and we're like, it said, get out. And he was like, it said, get out of here, right? And I was like, it said, get out, for sure. <laughs> like, yeah, it for sure did. It for sure did. I it, got, it was insane. That one, and Mike freaked the fuck out. Oh, yeah. He was like, I don't want to come back here ever again. He did, <laughs> but he really didn't like it. He never did ghost hunting with you again. No, hell no. I asked him to, and he's like, fuck no. Oh, my, my other friend God. Justin did it with me. And we got a couple more, but the other one that really, really was good, and you could hear it clearly, was uh, I kept asking, I said, what's your name? Tell us your name. Mm -hmm. And when you played it back, it said, I'm not telling. You'll never know. It little, And it was, you'll never know. Like, with infliction. What? I was like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'll be out at the end of my lease, buddy. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's insane. EVPs. Yeah. Have you captured some stuff like on camera? A camera. I used to work at a restaurant that was actually haunted. <laughs> uh, the restaurant it was declared like a historical landmark mm -hmm. because it was so. It was built in the 1850s, so they preserved like the um, the brick the not brick the rock mortar walls and gutted it. They were like barns and, and a house, and then turned it into a restaurant. But they I didn't preserved know it was all the like structure. A historical landmark. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, you know who lived there? Okay, the name of the road is called Braun Road. Carolina Braun was the wife that lived there. Who's that? Carolina Braun. Braun Road. Th the family Braun. Yeah, but it was... Is that's that who lived in, in... That's who lived in the house at Two Step. Oh. Okay. From the 1850s. That's where the name Braun comes from. Oh. But she's not like some famous... No, she's person. just... No, she just lived there in the 1850s. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> with her nine children, and almost all of them died in that house... It was in the 1850s. It was like, play, yeah. blah, blah. Oh, I, you know, got a sprained ankle. Oh, shoot him. He's dead. <laughs> like, I don't think, like, they died back then. So, yeah, I did. Like I convinced flies. my, uh, yeah. the owners that were actually really cool. It was family owned and the managers to let me do this. And they're like, for sure. And I caught a couple pictures. I'll dig through my, you know, stuff on my laptop and see if I can find them. Yeah. And then your manager there. Didn't you do something with him too? I did EVPs and a ghost hunt there at the restaurant after hours. We had to turn everything off. All the a restaurant makes so many noises at night. Like oh, everything I plugged in, especially fridges, fridges and freezers. Like the you can hear that shit on the fridges. Yeah, you can hear. Yeah. It. Um, no, do you go to his house? No. So that's oh man, that's a really creepy story. Okay. So <laughs> on the property or in the big shopping center of this parking lot was my restaurant. And a whole bunch of little stores and then a big ass bar. And it was yeah. Fast Eddie's. It's a pool bar, a pool hall. Well, we'd go in there and it's the same parking lot. And when we did that investigation and got pictures in the restaurant of like an orb. It's like an orb, like a misty orb. That's really what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And we told some of the people there, the manager freaked out and he's like, You like this kind of shit? Dude, this place is haunted too. It's the same land. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, of course. I mean, this was used to be like fifty acres. He's like, dude, it's haunted in here. And so he's like, you need to talk to my head bartender. I was like, why? He's like, just go fucking talk to Justin. I was like, okay. So I go to Justin. I was like, hey, I hear you're into paranormal. And he's like, yeah. And so I told him what I got and showed him the pictures. And he was fascinated. He's like, bro, my house is fucking haunted. Oh and I was God. like, what do you mean? Tell me. And he's like, okay, dude. So this is what's been going on. 
he had a daughter at the time and his daughter was i want to say like two when do you start like talking talking um like one and a half okay let's say one and a half two yeah you know little toddler and the wife just the three of them Mm -hmm. a little small house in a neighborhood pretty close to the restaurant well he said that there was something in that house he said that late at night, you know, he's a bartender. So bartenders, if you don't know, you know, bars closes at two in Texas. We get out of work like at four or five in the morning sometimes. Yeah. Got to clean, got to do all the money, got to do everything, put it back together for the next day. So he gets home really late, eats. He's there watching TV four or five in the morning. And he would always see a shadow around the corner of the living room. And every time he'd look, it'd be gone. But he, he said there was a shadow that constantly would peek around the corner and he would catch it out of the vision of his eye. You know, he's looking straight at the TV, and it's just right here to the right, and he'd look, and it's gone. Yeah. And it, it would fuck with him. And the wife really didn't like the house. They were renting it for a year, wanted to get the fuck out of it. Oh, my gosh. Well, the thing is, uh, I was so happy when he told me this, and I was like, dude, can I do a ghost inve- investigation at your house? And he's like, no. And I was like, why? And he said, because my wife is afraid of it. It's fucking with my daughter. And I was like, you're a little baby? Like, you're a toddler? And he goes, yes, dude. This is what happened. So I guess she was at the age where you move from, like, a crib to, like, a bed. Okay. And it's, you know, whatever, a tiny-ass little mattress. You know, I can't even imagine a foot off the floor. Yeah, and it has, like, the rails sometimes. Yes. So they had just taken off the rails. I guess she was getting past okay. that point. Had no rails. Yeah. Well, apparently for a week or two, she had fallen out of the bed a couple times, which is whatever, a foot off, not whatever, I'm not saying like, whatever, <laughs> I'm just saying like maybe it's a foot a off the ground. Bed, it's yeah. a small little fall, but their bedrooms were right next to each other. Okay. So Justin would be in his room, we're about to go to sleep, and he would hear, doom, and then her cry, and he would get up and walk straight into her room, which is literally right next to them, and she would be right next to the bed crying. She had rolled over and fallen out of bed. Oh, Okay. Go back to sleep, baby. You know, put her back in bed. Calm her down. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. It's happened a couple times. Well, you know, hopefully she, you know, she'll stop falling out of the bed soon and rolling over. Well, it happened one night, and boom, he hears the thud. She starts crying. He gets up. He said he was actually already getting up to go to the kitchen, so he was already like walking to the door. Yeah. Grab the door, walk straight into her room. It they're right next to each other, and as soon as he he said seconds, I want to say two three seconds. I was already in there. Like, I was, it's right next to each other. Yeah. As he walked in the door, his daughter is all the way across the other side of the room, and her back is against the wall. Like, she's laying down on the ground sideways, and her back's against the wall. Like, something had pulled her out of the bed and yanked her across the wall. And dragged her across the wall. And that her back was facing the wall, and her arms were going like this, like flailing, and she was screaming, crying. Oh, my God. And he, like, went and picked her up and grabbed her, and he's like, what the fuck was that? He I said, I was, oh I was, he's like, I was in there so fast from boom, wah, I know how it goes. Yeah. It already happened that like past two weeks. She's been falling on the bed and I'm in there and she's right there. She rolled over and is off the bed. Not literally 10 feet across exactly. on the other side against the wall. And he's like, oh shit. So the wife was like, we need to get the fuck out of here. And so that's why he wouldn't let me investigate because the wife was so terrified that it would aggravate it. And I was like, I totally get that, bro. Yeah, so, no, totally. You know, I let it go, and it was a crazy, fascinating story story to me, and I always wanted to investigate it. Well, whatever, time went by, and then one day he comes up to me, and he's like, hey, buddy, here. And he hands me some keys, and he's like, go investigate the house. I was like, what? For real? And he goes, yeah, dude, we finally got the fuck out of there. We're moving. We have it for the two more weeks the rest of the month, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> everything's pretty much out of there. If you want to go investigate it, go for it. So I was like, fuck yes. So we go to his house, and we're ready. I really want to see something. I want to, you know... Something's been messing with him. He he's kind of seeing it, shadowy figures, which like I think they like to fuck with you. That's the thing. Yeah, Not being seen all the way. They want to fuck with you and mess with your head. They want to make you think that you saw something and like question it. Question yourself. Like, exactly. Question really like, how you feel. Was there something just there? And then like question your like how you feel safe in your own house. Yeah. I mean that's the intent to put into you. Exactly. So we went into his house and we did an investigation. I did EVPs there. Didn't get anything. I took some video camera that I set up in one, one room in the living room. Didn't get anything. What did happen was when we walked into the little girl's room and uh, him and his wife's room. We walk into the little girl's room. The only thing that been left in there was a children's necklace that's made like with beads and plastic. Mm-hmm. And a stuffed animal that was a pony. Okay. So 
you know, we did inventories of all the room. What's in here? What's everywhere? Right. So I go in there. I'm like, okay, we move the pony to the side of the room, stand it up because it was so stiff. It stood up and put the necklace right next to it in a, in a complete circle. Okay. So we know if anything moves, we know it was moved. Right. We go into the parents' bedroom. The only thing in there was uh, some dumbbells, a jump rope. He was, uh, I think, judo or some martial arts, but okay. he was really fit, really into that stuff. So I guess when he was still cleaning and shit, he'd work out. Yeah. His bong <laughs> it was in his closet. You know, it was like one of those closets with the folding doors. The wife it, didn't let him take it. <laughs> yeah. That was not going to the new house, apparently. That was in his closet up on the shelf. And then on the door was hanging a buttoned up white shirt for, I guess, in between shifts or you needed to rush to work. He'd just yeah. throw on a dress shirt and go bartend. Okay. So, okay, cool. We know where everything's in. We know the inventory of the two rooms. We go sit in the girls' room. Sit there for quite a while and nothing happens. Like, I don't feel anything. Like, Meh, I don't feel anything. Okay, we go sit in the parents' bedroom. We sit in there for an hour, hour and a half, and nothing's happening. We're talking. Is anyone here? Can you do something? Can you make a noise? Can you make the room cold? Can you touch one of us? Nothing's happening. We're like, okay. So we're like, all right, let's uh, let's go back to the other room, pack up, and let's grab all our shit and go. You know, let's last inspection and leave. Yeah. So we walk into, and like I said, they are right next to each other. I stress that because of this time. And we walk into the girl's bedroom, and as soon as we walk in, I look, and the stuffed animal is on its side. Okay. And you think, okay, it could have fallen over. Right. Which it, it, it could have. It is possible. But when I stood it up, I pushed it a few times to see, what is it just going to by easy. itself fall over? Yeah. Like a little draft, like anything? No, it was not going to fall over, and it fell over. And as soon as I said that, I was like, the horse is on the ground. Whoever was with me, I think it was my girlfriend at the time or one of my buddies, the other bartender, he's like, did you hear that in the parents' bedroom? Like, literally, as something happened in front of us, it happened behind us in the other bedroom. So we turned around, and we walk in there, and that shirt had been picked up and thrown on the ground that was hanging on the door with the hanger. Yeah. It was, like, literally just picked up a little bit, you know, picked it up and threw it down. Just, like, let it fall. Right. And so it did boom, boom, but it didn't let us see it. It was kind of playing with us. And when I told Justin that, um, and that's all that happened there. Mm -hmm. But it kind of real quickly in front of us and then behind us did something. Right. And when I told Justin, he's like, it won't let you see it. It fucks with you. It's, like, playing around with you and frustrating you. I was like, okay, well, yeah, I didn't feel anything creepy and bad. But that was fucking weird because it happened very quickly. Right. And it was just one room. And then as I'm saying it. Oh, dude, the, the horse is on the, on the ground. It fell over. You hear like a, t or a just a light something like throwing, letting the shirt just drop onto the ground. Right. And we, you know, turn around and two feet away is the door. Go in there and it's on the ground. That's on the floor. That's so weird. I was like, oh, shit. I mean, you didn't feel anything creepy, but obviously. Not there? No. But obviously this spirit or whatever was haunting that little girl was not nice. What, if to it, drag it, her it, to pull her okay it's possible that she fell out of the bed because she had already been doing that yeah. or it's possible that it's pulling her out of the bed or turning her or yeah. like messing with her so she like you know what happens if it's scratching or, or tickling her and, and she then, turns like, over, over yeah. or something oh my gosh so oh my god that's pretty insane yeah there's, I don't even, oh, I'm speechless. <laughs> I mean, like I said, so if you've ever had an experience, you know, we would love to hear about your experiences. Yeah. If you guys have any experiences, let us know, DM us or post on the Facebook wall, yeah. whatever, because, or comment on the video, because we want to hear it. We love For this sure. stuff. And you love know what? It. Coming up, we're going to have some guests on the podcast. So if you have some good stories, we'd love to hear them too, because... We have some other good ones too, but you know, we don't have time right now. We'll do another episode and we then we'll do another do episode that. on UFOs and aliens and stuff because I have seen a UFO. <laughs> Not, she says, apparently saw. I did see a UFO. You saw something creepy that could have possibly been Something, a UFO. an unidentified flying object. That's a UFO. Okay. It was unidentified. It was well, not a drone. Go. Drones did not exist then. Yeah. It was not a helicopter. It was not a plane. It, the noise, it hummed. It went right over a residential, our house. Mm -hmm. It's not at the military base. It makes no sense what it was. And the way it moved and the colors of it. Right. It's not, there's not any aircraft that we had at that time. And like it that. made Mike run in the house. and <laughs> Run. He fucking ran when it, it came over us. Oh, so we'll talk God. about that next time. For yeah, sure. Yeah. We'll definitely have to do a paranormal part two episode. Paranormal and aliens. Yeah. We have 
so many more stories. I have a movie idea that will blow oh, your socks off. My God, we have to like sell this movie idea. I need to start. I'm gonna start writing the script. It's oh my God, it's actually phenomenal. The it idea. Is. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It wasn't as funny and crazy and wild as our other ones. A little but different, yeah. Definitely get to know us a little bit better. Get to know what we're really into. Stuff like the paranormal other beings oh my gosh if you've been possessed send, a, <laughs> send us a dm send us a dm yeah video footage lmk <laughs> yeah no oh my god but thank you guys so much for listening to episode five our paranormal episode hell yeah so hope you guys really enjoyed it please 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 go watch on youtube or listen on itunes and follow us on social media at effing priceless for every social media forum so that's it for this week and we cannot forget to thank our intro and outro bands oh of course our intro is a saltwater slide they're a local reggae band they're they're awesome y'all should go take a look at them any way you can spotify or pandora or youtube they're yep. really good chill music good vibes good bunch of guys environmentally conscious and they they do a lot they put on uh, different shows and uh, events but uh, check them out they're really cool yeah for sure and i don't think we've ever mentioned that their song is good times for our intro yes and for our outro it is love killed the hero wally our good friend wally Robles. thank you so much and don't forget to check out his npr tiny desk submission video for so damn nice that's it for this week. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you guys next Tuesday. See you next time, guys. It's getting late.